Good day everyone, I am Mark Evan Dumlao, your PT for this unit. I have not formally introduced myself, pero pwede nyo ako tawagin Sir Mark or Sir Kevin. Hopefully, marami kayong matutunan sa akin within the unit or possibly the rest of the semester. So our first discussion will start with proteins. But before anything else, I would like to share to you, class, the objectives of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, everyone is expected to differentiate proteins from carbohydrates based on structure, uh, illustrate the structure of amino acids and proteins, arrange peptide bonds, and perceive the importance of essential amino acids. So what are proteins? Proteins are the large complex molecules that are critical for normal functioning of cells. Our body are comprised of 20% of proteins. So, malaki ang percentage nito sa atin. And they are essential for the structure, function, and regulation of the body's tissue and organs. Proteins are present in all living organisms and include many essential biological compounds such as enzymes, hormones, and antibodies. Ang example natin dito is collagen for the structure. Uh, hemoglobin for transporting oxygen in our entire body which is very essential in cell respiration, di ba? And last is insulin which maintains normal blood glucose levels. There are many ways that these three shares no similarities. Just like the structure and monomers, meron din functions and properties ng pagkakaiba ng mga ito. For example, the properties of lipids. These macromolecules are hydrophobic, meaning hindi sila nadidissolve sa water. Carbohydrates are polar and can easily dissolve in polar solution. Meanwhile, the proteins have both polar and nonpolar properties. In terms of structure and monomers present naman tayo, as you can see in the diagram, carbohydrates are composed of monomers of saccharides. The lipids, in the other hand, are composed of triglycerides. The head part is derived from glycerol, which is bound to three fatty acids. The protein has also monomers, which are called amino acid. This amino acid is composed of amino group, carboxyl group, and an R group. Or we can call this a side chain. The side chain determines what amino acid is present in a protein. The term amino acid is short for alpha-aminocarboxylic acid. As you can see, it has the amino group, carboxyl group, and the side chain. Amino acid can be classified into two, um, essential and non-essential. The essential amino acids can only be acquired through the food we eat. Ibig sabihin nito, kailangan natin kumain ng certain amount or certain foods na rich in essential amino acids. While non-essential amino acids are already present in our body and can be synthesized through many metabolic processes happening in our body. Ibig sabihin nito, meron na talaga tayo sa katawan natin ng non-essential amino acid. Kaya siya tinawag na non-essential kasi hindi na natin kailangan na maghanap pa sa mga pagkain ng amino acid na to. This is the list of essential and non-essential amino acids. Bear in mind that every amino acids are abbreviated with three-letter symbol. For example, histidine, HIS, isoleucine, ILE, leucine, LEU. Uh, this will become handy once we started combining them into longer chains kasi kailangan medyo uh, maikli lang yung papangalan natin. There are nine essential amino acids. We also have classification of amino acids based on their structure. Let's tackle briefly each and every group. Let's start first in nonpolar. Amino acids are a class of amino acids in which the variable R group is comprised of mostly hydrocarbons. Pansin ninyo, yung side chain niya, puro hydrogen and carbons lang. These hydrocarbons give them the nonpolar properties, being hydrophobic. Aromatic R groups are amino acid whose side chain contains aromatic ring. 
hence the name of the group. Puro may mga benzene ring. Next is the polar group. These are the groups that are uncharged and their side chains love to place outside the folding. We also have we also have positively charged group. Now, the amino ends of the R groups of these amino acids are unbalanced and give the amino acids an overall positive basic charge. And lastly, the negatively charged group were in the carboxyl ends COOH of the R groups of these amino acids are unbalanced and the amino acids have an overall negative charge or acidic. Now let's discuss the peptide bond. In carbohydrates, the chains are connected through glycosidic bonding. Meanwhile, in proteins, Amino acids or polypeptides are joined together by peptide bonds. The image shown is an example of three amino acids connected by peptide bonds. Uh, the left side contains the amino group and the right side has the carboxylic group. This terminal can easily attach into different amino acids. We also have different forms of peptide bonds. We call it dipeptide if it contains two amino acid units, uh, tripeptide if contains three amino acid units, tetrapeptide if it has four uh, amino acid units, and oligopeptide if contains not more than 10 amino acid units. Polypeptide contains more than 10 amino acid units up to 100 residues. Meanwhile, if it exceeds 100 amino acid units, we can call these macropeptides. So, paano ba natin gagawin ang pag-connect ng amino acids? This process is very easy. If you are successful in carbohydrate bondings, this one will be a piece of cake sa inyo. This reaction involves a dehydration synthesis reaction or commonly known as condensation reaction. Because uh, in the process, a molecule of water will lose in every peptide synthesized. In the given example, a general formula of amino acid illustrates how the reaction takes process. The carboxyl group in amino acid 1 will have a bond in NH2 in amino acid 2 and yields to a diet peptide and a byproduct which is the water. Uh, let's try this in a simple amino acids. This example, a glycine is being bonded to alanine. The yellow elements signifies the radical group and the blue elements are the elements that will be removed after the process. The new dipeptide would be named as Gli-ala. Let's try to add another amino acid to produce a tripeptide and count how many water molecules will be produced in the process. We must note that everything should balance. From the previous dipeptide, Gli-ala, created, we have a single molecule of water, diba? Now we will add another amino acid which is cysteine. And let's see the product. After the reaction, the byproduct has now two molecules of water. The tripeptide will be renamed as Gli-Ala-Cis. Di ba madali lang? The structure of peptide can be written fairly easily without showing the complete amide synthesis reaction. By learning the structure of the backbone lang, malalaman na natin kung kung Ano yung magiging resulta? Basta, ang tatandaan lang natin dito is the side chain or the R groups. Kasi tingnan nyo yung pattern niya. The peptide backbone consists of repeating uh, units of NH2, um, C, bond to H, at C, double bond sa O.
Now, let's have the protein structure. Sabi dito, there are four protein structures based on the topology and complexity of bindings. The sequence of R groups along the chain is called the primary structure, which is the chain itself. The secondary structure refers to the local folding of the polypeptide chain. Tertiary structure is the arrangement of secondary structure elements in three dimension. And the last is yung quaternary structure, which describes the arrangement of a protein subunits. Uh, to, vi to visualize the structure, let's have some diagrams. This is an image of primary structure. It refers to the sequence of amino acids present in the polypeptide chain. The chain itself is the primary structure. Ito yung pinagdudugtong-dugtong nating mga amino acid. Siya yung primary structure. The secondary structure is the conformation of polypeptide chain formed by twisting or folding. It occurs when amino acids are linked by hydrogen bonds to form helix and alpha helix and beta pleated sheets. The alpha helix coil is held together by hydrogen bonds between the oxygen of the carboxyl group on the top of the coil and the hydrogen of amino group on the bottom of the coil. Yung beta pleated naman is when a polypeptide bonds side by side Ito, makikita nyo. Side by side ang connection ng hydrogen from the amino group and oxygen from the carboxylic group. The tertiary structure is a three-dimensional shape of a protein. Uh, the tertiary structure is primarily due to interactions between the R groups of the amino acids that make up the protein. Kaya ang magiging itsura ng tertiary structure is salasalabit na because of the radical groups bonding. Here, we can see that uh, there are hydrophobic group that bonds inside. Merong ionic group na nasa labas. Hydropli hydrophilic naman kasi sila. And also, we can see a sulfur to sulfur bond. The overall bonding makes it a complex structure. The fourth structure is the quaternary structure. It occurs in protein consisting of more than one polypeptide chain where certain polypeptides aggregate to form one functional protein. Some proteins are made up of multiple polypeptide chains, also known as the subunits. When these subunits come together, held uh, with each other, they give the protein its quaternary structure. And let's test your learnings. Determine the sequence name of the following image in succeeding slides. Answer it in a piece of paper. Also, uh, the answer will pop out shortly after kasi, so you may post the video when answering. Let's have some internalization. So, we discussed earlier the essential and non-essential amino acids. My question is, how important is meat, eggs, and poultry products in our daily dietary consumption? Well, it's an amazing day. Hopefully, may natutunan kayo sa akin. Uh, I will post na lang the instruction of our activities in the group chat and FB group along with the assignment for the next lesson.